the easiest French bread recipe ever. It is so fluffy, it's golden and bronze, it's absolutely scrumptious, and it takes literally a handful of ingredients to pull together that you probably already have on hand. Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we are making the easiest, most delicious French bread. Let's get started. I'm going to show you the ingredients you're going to need. The list is short and sweet, kind of like me, but they're all the right ones. This is basically my pizza dough recipe, pretty much, uh, that we're going to use to make French bread. It is so good. Trust me when I tell you, we have made it, I think we went over maybe th twice this, this week and each batch makes two loaves and I've used to make bread. I used to make French bread pizzas, uh, garlic bread. It's just the best. So let's get started. In this bowl, I've got some all-purpose flour. To it, I'm going to add instant yeast, salt, and sugar. If you're using, if you're not using instant yeast and you're using active dry yeast, you're going to need to bloom it in some water. But because I'm using instant, I don't have to do that. So I'm just going to add that all in and then I'm actually going to go grab some warm water because I forgot <laughs> to grab it. So I'm going to sprinkle this in and go get my water. Mix all your dry ingredients and like I said, because I'm using instant yeast. I don't have to proof it. It is literally the easiest thing in the world. We're going to add some warm water along with about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm just going to pop this on, throw in a dough hook attachment and just let it knead for about four to five minutes. And then in the meantime, I will get an oiled bowl ready, but you know what? I already got one risen because I love my carbs because I don't want to wait another two hours. <laughs> um, but we're going to go ahead and let this go and I'll show you what the dough looks like and I'll show you the one that we have that's proofed, but one step at a time. That is perfect. It's slightly tacky. It shouldn't feel wet. Like it shouldn't feel wet like a batter, but it should still be tacky, which this is. Take any off of that because we don't want waste any. See, it's it's tacky but not sticky. I'll get this right out using Mamma Mia! Lots of noise around here, as Papa Sa would say. Add that right to an oiled bowl. I don't even flip it. I kind of just leave it there as is. I'm going to go ahead and cover this with some plastic wrap. Move that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and cover this with plastic wrap and I'm going to get the other one that's ready and risen. You want this to rise until it's about double in size, if not just a little bit more. It can take anywhere between one to two hours in a nice warm draft free spot. I'll show you what it looks like and I'm going to put this one away. That is what you are looking for before I deflate it. I'm just going to go ahead and flour my board. I have a baking sheet ready with some parchment paper to it. I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal right at the bottom. Get this out. Oh, it's so perfect. I mean, it really is. Like, so many of you write me on a weekly basis, I kid you not, to tell me how much you love my pizza dough recipe. And I mean, it is pretty spot on, I have to say. Kind of cut this in half like that and I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna deflate this a ton I'm just gonna go ahead look at those bubbles I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a little log and you're thinking like wow that's tiny but wait till you see what happens when it rises it's kind of amazing put that on there like that the second one this is awesome by the way if you want like i always make obviously uh this particular batch uh and it does make two but it's so good to throw in the freezer and then you've got a loaf of french bread ready you know for dinner or like i said if you wanted to make french bread pizzas if you wanted to make um garlic bread whatever it's just lovely so like that and i'm gonna go ahead and score it i'm gonna take a really sharp knife That's perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and cover these with a lint-free towel and I'm just going to let them rest about 45 minutes and then we move on to the next step. 
They are beautiful and they're going to look even more beautiful after they're baked. I've got the oven preheated to 350. I have an egg wash that I just whisked really quickly. I'm sorry, not an egg wash, an egg white that I whisked really quickly, brushing it over the bread. This just kind of helps give the bread a really beautiful golden color and it's also gonna help some of the cornmeal and sesame seeds adhere to the bread. Beautiful. We got cornmeal like that. I used that brush for some herb <laughs> olive oil just a few minutes ago, so that's why if you see little pieces of herbs on there, that's what you're seeing. It's all good. Some sesame seeds. And this just goes into a 350 oven about 20 minutes and then wait till you see how beautiful they are. Now, can I just tell you how much my child is my child? When I made this the other day, it came out of the oven and she has an obsession with fresh bread. Like anything fresh, a fresh savory bread or cinnamon rolls or when I made the hot cross buns, she ate one like was really hot. She ran over, she smells and she goes, Oh, that's mommy's bread. And before it was even cool enough to handle, she literally took it, ripped it. And she's walking around with a half a loaf of bread just going to town. I'm like, wow. It's like looking in a mirror. Looking in a mirror. So this is going to just smell so fantastic. She's going to go nuts. So hot oven, 350, about 20 minutes. And you're going to want to let them cool before you cut them. And I'll show you what they look like when they are done. You can't deny that these look absolutely gorgeous i mean look at that beautiful loaf of bread it's pretty fantastic i have to say um they were in the oven 25 minutes i've let them cool a bit but they are still warm if you wanted to you can make one big giant one i make two smaller ones but you can make a bigger one you just want to cook them long enough until the internal you know inside the temperature reaches 205 otherwise it'll be gummy nobody wants that i mean it's literally so wonderful and you don't need any sp special molds i mean look at that it's fluffy it's airy look see that gorgeous i mean there really is nothing better mm-hmm mm so good It's perfect in every way. It's perfectly balanced in terms of you know, flavor and salt, beautiful crust, tender crumb, bouncy and light, perfect. LauraInTheKitchen.com has you covered with the recipe. Hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Please follow me on the old gram because you're gonna see me make maybe some French bread pizzas with the other loaf, maybe some garlic bread, I don't know. Come hang out over there, join the fun. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.